Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics. And today I want to talk about how you should treat your passion. And a lot of people talk about their passion. There's websites and and books dedicated to this. And so I'm not saying that this is anything new, but for my channel and for the polymathic approach, this is what I find to be uh, the most, uh, how can I put it, the most engaging way, the most truest, the, the, the truest way um, to really get in touch with what you love. And so for me, and this will probably be a whole nother video in and of itself, but in short, I believe that your passion can change over time, right? Because it's not about what you do. It's about who you are and why you do it, right? And so if you're constantly passionate about something, that thing can evolve over time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like I said, that'll be a whole nother video. So to get back to my point, I'm going to use an, a book that I've... Uh, I've quoted from before today I'm not gonna quote but I'm just gonna kinda paraphrase but um, it's page after page by Heather Sellers it's one of the greatest writing books there are if you wanna find inspiration in your writing and good tips on really getting in deep with who you are and getting that out on the paper um, but one of the things that Heather Sellers points out in her book that I thought was very eye-opening and very um, great was that for writers, if they truly are a writer and they truly consider themselves a writer, then their story should be like their lover. Meaning that when they're at work, their mind is constantly thinking about coming home to work on their story. When they have little free times, bits of free times, they sneak a couple words in. Or they catch themselves daydreaming about the next scene that they're going to write. Or the new character that they just uh, created a backstory for. Or maybe some new weapon that's going to create more conflict in, 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 um, in the story. Um, all of these things, right? That's the way an author should feel about their story. And so much so that if people take them away from their story, then they get a little upset and a little angry. And, and or if, if they themselves, for whatever reason, maybe they're sick or life has kind of over, you know, overcome them a bit. Maybe you know, a family member was sick or ill and they, they don't get the time to write, it weighs on them. It weighs on them. All they can think about is the next time that they get to spend time with their story. Because it's their lover. It's their true love in life. It's their passion. It's what they live for. And they ignore all others. And they forget about doing the dishes. And they forget about, um, you know, taking the dog out and doing all kinds of things because they're addicted. They're addicted like, like, uh, like a drug to the passion that they have for their story and um, anyone who is a writer anyone who both fiction and nonfiction if you truly believe in what you're writing and you truly love it then I think you can definitely uh, relate to what she's saying and so for those of you who haven't read the book you should definitely read the book but more to the point those of you who aren't writers this still applies to you because what she's talking about is solely for, for authors and storytellers, but we all have a story to tell. And that story revolves around our passion. And, and whether you're a writer or not, that is the way you have to treat your gift, your gift that has been given to you for you to share with the world. And, and it's your mission in life. And not because you have to do it, but because every time you're engaged in it, it makes you feel more full inside and, and energized and, and just completely filled with life. That, so for one, if you're having a trouble, if you're having, 
you're having problems identifying what your passion is, you should take a close look at your life and think, what are the things that make me feel like that? That make me feel like I'm in a, in, a, in a relationship with a lover, with a mistress, with someone that I, that I you know, would sneak around just to, just to spend little pieces of time with them because they're so intriguing to me. And then for those of you who know what it is, this is a, this is a way to identify whether or not you're treating your, your, your passion, your vision, your goal with the appropriate attention. Now, I'm not saying that you forsake all others. That's not true. And that's actually a bad route to go because the people in your life and, and the experiences that you go through will only help enrich uh, whatever it is that your goal, is, your project, your vision, your passion is. However, um, far too often, most of us, I would say the good majority of us are on the other side of the spectrum. How many times have you heard someone say, oh yeah, I'm, I, I, I'd like to write. That's something I've thought of doing. I, I've got a story in me. Or, yeah, you know, if only I had more time, I could do this. Or, if only I had more time, I could do that. Whenever I hear someone say that, I immediately do an eye roll in my head. And I, and I ask myself, do they really, truly want to do this? Is that really truly who they are and what they want to be? Because if it was, if they really truly cared about it as much as they said that they did, then nothing would stop them. Nothing would get in their way. And if it did, it would, it would create so much melancholy within them, so much anger and, and, and resentment that they would just be on fire on the inside until they had the burst free. That's the passion that that should come with your dream and um, and so for those of you who know what your dream are but maybe you've been you've been letting other things get in the way and like I said I mean there's a million and one things work extra hours bills different sporting events for the kids, doctor's appointments, the, the list goes on and on. Family, right? You have to draw a line. You have to look at it from a different angle and say, if this is what I truly love and want to do in life, if this is my gift that I and only I have been given to share with the rest of the world, is this really how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do it? I'm just gonna squander it away? Or are you gonna take hold of that? And are you gonna fight for it? And are you going to love it with all of the the passion and desire and, and will within you to to constantly constantly be fighting for it? But um In closing, I'd say, think about that. What are the things that are keeping you from it? What? Are, so for those of you who don't know what your passion or desire is, like I said before, what is it that makes you feel this way? And I guarantee you, that's probably what it is. And if you haven't felt that way in a while, one, I feel bad for you. And two, look back to your childhood. In Robert Greene's uh, best-selling book, Mastery, one of the chapters talks about finding what it is, what skill it is that you're supposed to master. And a lot of times, the great masters in the past, what they did was they, 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 they had natural proclivities from a young age. And so sometimes we have to look back to our, our childhood to find what those things were that made us so alive and energetic inside. And then for those of you who know what it is, but have been putting it off, identify those things that are getting in the way. And then ask yourself, are they really worth it? Is three or four hours of TV every night really worth losing my dream? Is that extra hour or two of sleep really worth losing my dream? 
are meaningless conversations with people who I don't care about really worth my dream? Is, is going out every weekend or maybe even every night, depending on who you are, with friends, drinking and partying and stuff, is that really worth my dream? I'm not saying you can't do any of these um, at all, but what I'm saying is right now, it seems like the pendulum has shifted in the wrong direction. You should be doing more stuff towards your dream and occasionally celebrating and enjoying life with those things instead of doing those things all the time so that your dream has been has been stamped out and and suppressed to the point where you're miserable about it but you don't you, you can't get out of this like snowball effect that's going on so I hope this has been helpful and um, if you would like to hear more information like this then please feel free to subscribe to my channel but I'm gonna close here and until I see you next time take it easy